Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the Oasis Focus and Finance Show, the first for 2016. I'm your host, Shafiq Morton. As always, it's a great pleasure to be with you, and we hope and trust that you had a wonderful holiday. In last year's show, we had a look at uh, events that impacted upon our financial landscape. And in one of our last episodes, we spoke to Adam Ibrahim, the CEO of the Oasis Group. So should you want to watch any of the past episodes, you can tune into the Oasis Crescent YouTube channel, and we will put those details up on screen during the show. So don't forget it, the Oasis Crescent YouTube channel. And of course, if you have any queries, comments, or questions, the SMS line will appear on screen during the course of this show. Our guests tonight are key members of the Oasis investment team, Ishmael Ibrahim and Daniel King. And we're going to be having a look at our economic situation, what sort of situation are we in, and answering some questions with regards to that. But gentlemen, assalamu alaikum, welcome to the show. Good evening. Alaikum salam. Daniel, we're going to start off with you. Before we start looking forwards, let's look backwards on just on some of the major events of 2015 that have impacted us into 2016. Yeah. I think for South Africa in particular, it was quite an important year uh, socio-politically. Uh, it would have kept many political, political analysts uh, very busy during the year. You know, we started the political year uh, with the disruption of the state of the nation and the, and the budget addresses, um, which was unusual. And then, uh, kind of contrasting that trend, we saw a relatively peaceful uh, negotiation of the public wage mm -hmm. bill. Uh, some of our viewers might remember three or four years ago, that process was uh, a lot more tense. So kind of contrasting trends uh, being shown there. Uh, later in the year, we also saw the, uh, you know, the, the famous or infamous uh, roads must fall and fees must fall protests, which also really brought uh, the, the power of social media to the fore in everyone's minds. And then, and then in December, also the shuffling and the reshuffling of the finance minister, which caused uh, that market volatility that we saw across the asset classes. Um, globally, it was also quite an Im important year. Uh, some of the themes that defined the year included the, the global oil supply glut and then the, the kind of economic slowdown in China that further accentuated that, that, that oil price decline to, to its current long-term lows, which has continued into the new year, uh, really putting qu quite a, a solid cap on inflation pressures globally and locally, although to some extent that has been offset um, by the RAND depreciation in, in recent months. And then also uh, from a global perspective, quite an important event in the US, uh, the Fed Federal Reserve uh, increased its benchmark interest rate, its policy rate for the first time since 2006, which was quite a, an anticipated event. Uh, so that really, really defining the, the economic landscape for the year. In terms of uh, South Africa's economy, uh, GDP numbers, you know, the mining sector actually did quite a lot better the, uh, last year than it did in 2014. And that's largely on the back of the absence of, of uh, more intense strikes and then the manufacturing sector also starting to show some signs of, of picking up uh, on the back of a more competitive currency. Uh, and then one of our major trading partners, Europe, starting to, to kind of come out of its slumber and, and supporting our manufacturers as well. Of course, that was offset to some extent um, by the drought. So agricultural output in South Africa in the last year has been down quite sharply. And you're also seeing that in maize prices uh, increasing quite sharply. And then a, a government spending slowdown as well. And then we add to that on the back of kind of tighter credit conditions globally. Uh, a, a bit of a slowdown in household spending and investment spending remain relatively subdued. Uh, and it was kind of a, a, a relatively uh, challenging year from a, from a growth perspective at 1.4%. You know, that's not quite up to South Africa's potential growth rate of uh, many estimate between 2 and 3% currently. But there were some pockets of strength in the economy, as I alluded to, in the industrial sector, in the manufacturing sector. And we also believe that uh, from a socio-political perspective, there is good reason to be optimistic um, um, on, on the renewed ability of the South African people to, to make their voices heard in the political debate. Um, and, and, the, and the renewed invigoration of that debate is, is, is something that we were quite impressed with over the last year. Daniel, just to stay with you very quickly, we had a major event in December, mm. uh, the scenario of, of a new finance minister being appointed and everything surrounding that. How has that affected us going into 2016? Yeah, Shafiq, I think it's important to realize that if South Africa as an economy exported more than we imported, or if we collected more in government revenues, more than we spent uh, at the public sector level, 
um, you know, global capital flows, investor flows in and out of the country would not matter as much as what they do. If we were self-sufficient, for example, in food and energy, um, again, those global flows would be, would be less important because the weaker rand would not necessarily impact food and energy prices. But the fact is that we, we do run uh, deficits, so we, we do import more than we export, we do spend more at the public sector level than we receive in revenues. And so what that means is that global flows which impact the rand start to impact the prices of these goods and services such as your food and the energy that you are importing. So some inflationary pressures have kind of re-emerged in the wake of that, of that um, market response, that rand response. And in the context of the, of the local drought, we are likely to see uh, food prices in particular increase quite, quite materially uh, over the next year on the back of that. So the Reserve Bank, in light of this, is probably going to be required to be a bit more vigilant on its kind of policy rate, uh, which means we could see some increases in, in short-term interest rates in the near term, which ultimately raises the cost of borrowing uh, across the economy. The banks are likely to pass that on to the consumer. And, and, and local businesses, and uh, it's also likely to impact uh, you know, asset prices like houses, for example. So from an inflation and an inter interest rate perspective, you know, conditions are likely to remain relatively tight this year, due in part, in part to the December events. Uh, that being said, our policymakers do have a really good opportunity uh, in February, um, through the State of the Nation and the budget addresses, to really um, come out strongly uh, with, with measures to kind of mitigate mitigate the impact of those, of those developments. Right. Ishmael, I think it's a given that a weakening RAND does lead to sentiments of negativity. I do know that during the course of last year, you always used to emphasize that a weaker RAND is not necessarily always a negative on our financial landscape. Just expand on this. Well, to add what, to what Daniel sketched out uh, in terms of the environment last year, was another theme was also, you know, with that expectation of the Fed hiking, emerging market currencies came under pressure. And with that, South Africa was one of them. South Africa's been in those group of countries who've experienced pressure on the currency, together with, it's been also compounded by the fact that, you know, China's been slowing down the rate of growth. It's a tr key trade partner. And commodity prices, a key export of ours has also come down. Having said that, so the currency is weakened. Having said that, there are still major benefits of a weaker currency. To point out, there are other industries that benefit, so you've got your exporters who benefit, but also there are industries that we've seen recently, we've come through the festive season, we've seen a huge pickup in tourism. If I look at the numbers that came out recently, uh, in, we look at December and we compare December's performance 2015 to what, it happen, what had happened last year. I'll take two key uh, national treasures of ours. I'll take Table Mountain, number of visitors has actually increased by 28% this December over last December. That's a huge increase. Uh, if we look at Robben Island, 43% increase relative to last year. Another huge increase. If we look at some of the events, the Test Series against England, which has also attracted quite a bit of the Barmy Army who are down. And they've obviously taken advantage of the cheap prices uh, in coming to stay here. And, and that's given our tourism industry a huge benefit. If we also compare some of the service industries, now we've touched on in the past, South African services are some of the best in the world. And with our rentals, as cheap as they are, so when these international companies compare uh, South African rentals to some other places globally, our currency is so cheap, th those guys are paying rentals in rands and not in dollars, where they would pay dollar rentals in certain places like Russia and Nigeria, for example. South Africa, they play they pay rand rentals, which is when they do the conversion for them, it makes complete sense. So they set up office here. And while setting up office here, we're talking about Amazon. We've seen them in Cape Town uh, rolling out as a, a good staff complement. We've seen people like Bloomberg, Thomson Reuters, all setting up shop here. And then more South Africans would have also seen the retailers. So while they're setting up shops in some of our malls, H&M, uh, Zara, uh, uh, Cotton On, so, but they've also got offices which they're setting up. And through that, so you're employing people, um, you're employing people in your back office, you're employing people in your front shop, in your retail, and that's all beneficial. So th those type of industries will benefit. And there certainly are significant opportunities from that point of view. And then finally, just to touch on it, while the RAND is weak, we, should, we as South Africans should also use this as an opportunity to support our local manufacturers and our local producers. And some good examples are, we've seen Joburg, you know, they've got like rooftop markets and this type of thing. They are also locally produced goods, and we should take the opportunity to support that. 
Ishmael, as you said, the Barmy army is smiling. They seem to be very happy with our RAND situation. But I think a lot of South Africans are beginning to ask the question, will the RAND ever go back to, I think, 2010 when it was about six RAND plus to the dollar? Your, your feelings on the way forward for the RAND, where is the RAND going to go to? The RAND is commonly thought of as one, is one of the most volatile currencies in the world. So firstly, as from an investment decision point of view, it's not sensible to forecast or to take decisions based primarily on RAND forecast. And hence we've talked about in the past the importance of diversification and that type of thing. And we've talked about, uh, some of my colleagues have talked on this show about the benefits of our balanced products and that type of thing, as well as diversification, which I'll touch on a bit later. Um, but just in terms of, if we look at relative, so the RAND is, like uh, we indicated earlier, the RAND hasn't been alone in terms of its weakness. It's been a comp other EMs have also come under pressure because of that expectation of dollar strength. So you, um, you mean EM emerging markets? That's right, emerging okay, markets. Right, so yeah. places like uh, Thailand, for example, Turkey has come under pressure, Russia, Nigeria with a lower oil price, uh, and that type and many other Asian countries have also come under pressure. Brazil is another one. So the RAND hasn't been alone. So it's been hastened by the China effect, the slowing growth in China, the lower commodity prices, some political risk, which Daniel touched on earlier. We've also in South Africa, you've had uh, some electricity issues which have affected our supply side. So those things are South Africa related, but also like I indicated, the RAND hasn't been on its own. I'll give you a way to think of it. Um, we, you know, we talk about purchasing power parity. And if you look at, we're talking about the undervalue, how undervalued the RAND is. If you, one, 100 RAND gives you about four pounds 30, or somewhere around there, four pounds 30. I was recently in the UK, four pounds 30 can't give you a decent breakfast in London. What we get here is in South Africa, we get beautiful coffee, a beautiful breakfast, you'll get a full breakfast for 100 Rand. If we compare some of our hospitality services and our hotels are some of the best in the world, you compare places like the Mount Nelson, etc. you know, you'd be spending double what you would if you were to go to a similar hotel for the similar type of service in London, in America, in Hong Kong, or anywhere else in the world. So from that point, it gives you a sense of how undervalued the rand is from a value for money perspective. We're getting a lot more value uh, for our, our money. Okay, Ishmael, we're going to leave it there. And you are watching the Oasis Focus and Finance Show. We're looking at the way forward in terms of the South African economy. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back right after this.